All right, everybody, welcome. This is your week five recap here on Sunday night. Deshaun Watson, 51 fantasy points, six point per passing touchdown leagues. Aaron Jones, 48 PPR fantasy points. Will Fuller, 53 PPR fantasy points. Those three players are your number one quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers, not just for week five, but for the entire season. So we had uh, we had some pretty amazing performances, and Christian McCaffrey was just one PPR point behind Aaron Jones. Hey, Dave Richards here. Dave, welcome to Sunday night. Is this this is what it's like, huh? I, I'm I'm not used to this, but I think I'm making the commitment. I'll be on every Sunday night show now. That is great. Uh, and Heath is of course here. Heath, how you doing? Good to see you. I am fantastic. I did not trade Will Fuller last week, so I could not be any better. <laughs> I did, but. I still started him in two other leagues, so, you know, I, I needed a little bit less Will Fuller exposure. Um, thank you all so much for listening. Let's get right to the show with six scintillating questions from a man who loves alliteration. All right, let's start with this. How would you rank these three wide receivers rest of season? Mike Evans, no catches today. Robert Woods, DJ Chark, huge game Started in about half half a leagues. Uh, Mike Evans, Robert Woods, DJ Chark. How would you rank them, Dave Richard? I'm trying to make the case for Mike Evans as the top guy on the list, and I'm having a really hard time because I don't <laughs> even think he's the best receiver on his team anymore. I think Jameis likes throwing to Chris Godwin more. I think the stats kind of show it. Jameis made excuses for why Mike Evans didn't get more targets. We can talk about that later. I talked about what I liked about DJ Chark. I like that he's getting high leverage targets. He gets end zone targets every week, gets deep ball throws every week. Gardner Minshew is the guy that's really making him work. I'm not 100% certain that he's going to be under center for Jacksonville the rest of the way, but for the time being, DJ Chark is the guy I would take. Hey, first. Now, you they, they, hey, rank the three rest of season, Dave. Chark Mike one, Evans, yeah. Robert Woods. Chark one, Evans two, wow. Robert Woods three. Chark one, okay. There it is. He's Heath? I would feel much more comfortable doing this exercise after next week when DJ Chark faces the same matchup that just shut down Mike Evans this week. Uh, they go against the Saints. It will be interesting after Chark goes. We thought this was going to be a difficult matchup. If he does it again next week, I would probably have to agree with Dave that he's number one. As of right now, they would all three still be in my top 20 wide receivers rest of season. But I don't think I, I would still likely have it Evans and then Woods and then Chark, at least in PPR. All right, how would you rank these three quarterbacks? Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott, and Jameis Winston. This was a better, more scintillating question when Prescott was struggling, but he finishes with well over 400 passing guards, 26 fantasy points. Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott, Jameis Winston. Heath, you get the first go. Rank them. Ah, man, I really struggle with this Arizona office. I think I'd have to go Dak and then Winston and then Kyler. I've been pretty impressed by Kyler Murray, the player. I've been pretty unimpressed by Cliff Kingsbury, the NFL head coach. I'm just not sure he's ready for this job. Dak struggled, but I do like how much they're throwing the ball. I like the options that he has in the passing game. I still trust him a little bit more than I do, Jameis. Dak is the easy one at the top of the list. And I think I'm still going to take Jameis ahead of Kyler Murray. Although if it was just for, I think it's just the next couple of weeks, the next two weeks, I would take Kyler because they've got Atlanta in week six at home. That's going to be great for Kyler Murray. And then they're at the Giants in week seven. So two of the easiest matchups you could ask for for Kyler Murray. And he's running the ball a lot more now. I think that he would be good for the next two weeks. But rest of the season, Jameis is a little bit ahead. I like Kyler Murray, though. Two of his last three games, 69 rushing yards or more. So 69, then 27, then 93 rushing yards. Just needs to score some more touchdowns, but he does finish with 25 fantasy points. I think Jameis had 20, six point per passing touchdown leagues, but he didn't have a very good game. He had two interceptions called back. He, re he regressed, certainly. Um, against the defense, to be fair, that did great against Dak Prescott just a week ago. All right, so uh, let's go to our third scintillating question. How would you rank these three running backs rest of season? Devontae Freeman, Joe Mixon, and the guy I sat in the two leagues I own him in, Josh Jacobs. Devontae Freeman, Joe Mixon, and Josh Jacobs. Huge game for Jacobs today. Dave. If you're asking me, Freeman is going to be third, and then feet to the fire. Is that a sigh? Did I just, did I just drop sigh. a sigh? Nice. 
I'm I'm really struggling between Jacobs and Mixon. I think Jacobs' offensive line is only going to get better once a couple of their injured guys come back. I don't think their schedule is particularly poor. I know that he's game flow dependent, but I think Mixon to a degree is as well. So I I think I'm probably going to end up taking Jacobs ahead of Mixon and both of them ahead of Freeman. It's I, I don't know if I can hold myself to this between Jacobs and Mixon, and I don't know if recency bias is really what's making me choose Jacobs here. Take a stand, Dave. Joe I Mixon. said Jacobs first, Josh but Jacobs. you know, it's on, on the on the take a stand meter. It's about a two. I'll take Mixon still first. I'll take Jake Jacobs second. And there is a wide chasm before I get to Devontae Freeman. I am scared to death of his situation right now. I'm glad he scored a touchdown. I hope that means you all get to go sell him for whatever any pennies on the dollar that you can get. Mixon, then Jacobs, then Freeman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, did his audio drop or something? No, oh, no. Now I'm choking death. Um, he I, is it possible Freeman's the best one in PPR though? I mean, look at his receiving totals in his last the th- oh, two games: eight for seventy-two, five for forty, and one. He's had three or more catches in every game. At least he's doing that. Yeah, but That's he can't nice. run the ball very well he just he does not look like the same guy from two years ago which is what I was afraid of it's why I didn't draft him in any leagues and there will probably be some weeks where at most he gets three catches and Matt Ryan will have a little bit more time and he will throw downfield and he'll make Julio Jones worth that first round pick Um, but I'm I'm very nervous about Freeman all right fair enough Uh, if you were drafting again today and assuming Saquon Barkley is back next week week six who is the first pick in your drafts? McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey. It's not close. It's not close. He's on it's pace. Christian McCaffrey. He's on pace for 409 non PPR fantasy points. 508 PPR fantasy points. He's on pace for like 2,700 total yards, or more like 2,800. Uh, he's on pace for more than 100 more fantasy points than the number one running back last year. It's it's staggering how good he's been. All right, we can we can go to the next he, one. Uh, he also limped off late in the game against Cramps. Jacksonville. But uh, it, it doesn't Cramps. seem serious. He's fine. What do you think about the Chargers running backs? What do you think about the Chargers running backs now with Gordon getting almost all of the carries and Eckler catching 15 passes? Car- catches are a lot more valuable than carries in fantasy. That may be especially true as bad as their offensive line has looked the last couple of weeks. Um, I don't think it will remain that way all season long. And I still think that Melvin Gordon will eventually get to the point to where he overtakes and maybe gets to the point where he's getting 16, maybe 17 touches per game. But I was anticipating next week ranking Melvin Gordon ahead of Austin Eckler in both formats. It may be another week away now. I, I agree with that. And you, we saw Gordon have 16 touches and Eckler had 18 touches. It was just 15 of the 18 touches for Eckler were catches. And it's smart for the Chargers to use him that way. He's really good that way. So you're probably going to see him continue in that role. And it especially made sense against Denver because Denver's front seven, we, we talked about it coming into the week. A lot of question marks there. And the outside linebackers, I'm not sure how well they can do covering sideline and sideline. So it was smart of the Chargers to lean on Austin Eckler, and he had been playing really well. Gordon just doesn't look great. It's his first game playing football since last year. Let's just see how he does. I'm sure in a couple of weeks, Melvin Gordon will be the better back for fantasy. Okay, and they both had almost touchdowns. Eckler's was receiving, mm-hmm. and Gordon's was rushing. A couple of almost touchdowns for you there. Uh, final scintillating question, number six here. Of these three guys, who is okay to drop? And please select all that apply. Miles Sanders, Ronald Jones, Stefan Diggs. Miles Sanders, Ronald Jones, Stefan Diggs, Heath. Only Miles Sanders would I feel good about dropping. Hopefully... Um, there will be there will be some weeks where you can feel comfortable starting both Thielen and Diggs. I this was a little disappointing that Peyton Barber scored the touchdown, but we pretty much said we wanted to add Ronald Jones. We didn't feel great about him against this bad matchup. I still expect him to be the better running back in Tampa Bay over the rest of the season. So, Sanders is the only one you could drop. I don't want to, but you could. I'm sorry to to step on you there, Heath. I agree with you. I don't want to drop any of these guys. I know that they didn't have games that you thought they'd have. But I I do think that it's going to take a little longer than we thought for Miles Sanders to be the main guy in Philadelphia. Jordan Howard, another touchdown. Uh, Jones looked good in spurts today. There were some runs that he had that really looked great. 
And then Stefan Diggs, it, it looks like he's going to be a boomer bust type of wide receiver three moving forward where he does have a hundred yard potential and he might occasionally get some touchdowns, but he's not going to be eight or nine touchdowns. Like we've seen from him in the past, the yardage probably won't get into uh, quadruple digits on the season. And uh, this is just a Vikings team that really wants to run the football. And as long as Dalvin cook is doing his thing, you're not going to see Diggs get his best numbers. Thielen will get his more often than not ahead of his. Uh, ahead of, of Diggs numbers, I'm saying. If I saw these guys on the waiver wire, how quickly would I make a move to pick them up? I think I would probably move the fastest for Diggs and the second fastest for Sanders. Okay. Well, look, I mean, it, it's not the production that I'm concerned about for Sanders because it was, you know, a tough match for, for Jones. Nine carries, 35 yards, two catches, 21 yards at the Saints. We knew it was a tough matchup. It's the fact that he had the same amount of carries as Peyton Barber, and for the second straight game, Peyton Barber scored a touchdown. Yep. So, and, and then in terms of Sanders, like he's just not the goal line guy. That's extremely obvious. Um, and Jordan Howard's not going yep. not Right. Yeah, yeah, I know. So neither of them, though. I mean, Ronald Jones will get some goal line work. Sanders, I don't know if he will, at least for the foreseeable future. But I was I was more disappointed that the that they had an even split in carries in Tampa Bay rather than Ronald Jones having a bad game, which I halfway expected. It was a step back in terms of the workload. You but, you, you know, may you may want to hope that these guys hit waivers in your league because the waiver wire doesn't look very pretty no. for <laughs> week number six. No, good good segue. Let's go to the big news, then we'll take an early look at the waiver wire, and then we got winners and losers. Wait till you hear Heath's winners. I mean what I look I look for guys that, you know, kind of uh, big change in fantasy value, kind of make make people think a little bit. Heath really uh, went uh, went for you, it. So was, was, were, were there two bigger changes in fantasy value than the two guys I chose? Well, I'm just saying, like you know, I I don't know how you came up with it. I guess is what I'm saying. Like, I think just, yeah. I, I think I everybody deep. listening should deep. try and predict who yeah. Heath's two big winners are before yeah. he reveals them. All right, uh, Tyree Kill could play next week. Mason Rudolph left with a concussion. I was. I think we all probably were, but I was like physically ill. I was so upset when he was knocked out. Um, I was glad to see him, you know, get up and regain consciousness. And I don't know if he officially lost consciousness or not, but it looked like he did. And it was all, it was ugly. Um, Wayne Gallman left with a concussion in the first half and don't know if Barkley will be available, but they have a short turnaround. They have a Thursday game at new England. Amari Cooper left with an ankle injury. He came back and then he was great. An awesome touchdown catch. He really abused Jair Alexander the entire game. Philip Dorsett left with a hamstring injury. It's not believed to be serious. And again, Thursday night game, Patriots-Giants. Uh, Pittsburgh wide receiver James Washington left with a shoulder injury. Christian McCaffrey had the cramps. Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews both left with injuries. They both came back. Same with Austin Hooper. So we thankfully don't have a big laundry list of injuries this week. Do we have anybody worth picking up? Let's take an early look at the waiver wire. Dave, who would you recommend right now? It's Sunday night. Uh, a sneak peek. I, I haven't looked through every single box score and watched every single bit of film, but it's still a name from Thursday, and that's Gerald Everett, whose playing time has really um, gone up each of the last four weeks. It's probably somebody we should have been on a little bit sooner, but clearly has an important role in this Rams offense, and his target share could continue to rise if Brandon Cooks doesn't play in week number six. Yeah, I'm going to go All right. a, a guy that we talked about for this week that never got over like 52% owned, and he was terrible for three quarters, but he scored a touchdown late. Great matchup for Auden Tate this week against a Baltimore defense that didn't look good against Pittsburgh's third-string quarterback. They just cannot stop the pass right now at all. And so I, I, was, I would guess Auden Tate will be the guy that I'm trying to add if he's not already owned all my leagues. And Baltimore just lost starting safety Tony Jefferson for the season to an ACL injury. That's a big one, yep. He was not having a good year, but still, it's it's an injury to a starting defensive back. Uh, so right now, Heath, going into Sunday night, seven, eight, nine, Andy Dalton is QB10. This Nobody got more debate than Andy Dalton this week. Dave and I were anti-Dalton. Jamie and Heath were pro-Dalton. It looked terrible. How do you feel about him with a pretty good chance to finish top 12 this week? It's, I'd never a doubt. I fully expected him <laughs> all the way. I I didn't apologize on Twitter for a terrible call on the Bengals and then see them score two. Like, reverse jinxes always work, and that was proof. Yeah. Um, it was a bad performance for three quarters, and the Arizona defense was just bad enough to propel Dalton to a 
it was going to be really interesting is where do you rank him this week? Because it is a an interdivision matchup, but it's also during the day, and Baltimore's defense has looked so so bad. It's going to be See, fun. I I don't know if it has to do with if it's at day or if it's at night. I think for three quarters he was just under siege. I don't think he even had. 100 yards passing through the first three quarters. He was 13 of 14 for 167 yards and two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. There was busted coverage wow. on on Tyler Boyd. Um, I on Boyd's long catch and run for a touchdown. Uh, I'm I'm frankly frazzled that Andy Dalton has a chance to finish as a top 12 fantasy quarterback this week. Yeah, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, but hey, at least I started Philip Rivers over him now. Let's talk about <laughs> ZipRecruiter, okay? <laughs> if you need to hire, you need to go to ZipRecruiter.com slash FFT and try it for free because hiring can be a slow process. Cafe Altura COO Dylan Miskowitz needed to hire a director of coffee for his organic coffee company, but he was having trouble finding qualified applicants, so he switched to ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its technology identifies people with the right experience and invites them to apply to your job so you get qualified candidates fast. Now, Dylan posted his job on ZipRecruiter, and he said he was impressed by how quickly he had great candidates apply. He also used ZipRecruiter's candidate rating fe uh, feature to filter his applicants so he could focus on the most relevant ones. And that's how Dylan found his new director of coffee in just a few days. With results like that, it's no wonder four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. So see why ZipRecruiter is effective for businesses of all sizes. Try it for free at our web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash FFT. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash FFT. ZipRecruiter.com slash FFT. That's ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. All right, guys. Winners and losers. Heath, uh, what do you got for us today? I tried to Psych dig a little stuff. bit deep this week and go to some guys <laughs> that maybe people didn't notice the performances they had. Um, I thought uh, the guy in Green Bay, Aaron Jones, was a big yeah. winner this week with Jamal Williams out of the lineup. Uh, they've been trying so hard to push this full committee in Green Bay. And Matt LaFleur did this last year with the Tennessee Titans for about 12 weeks, 12 weeks too long. And then when he finally gave Derrick Henry a big chunk of work, Derrick Henry was awesome. It took Jamal Williams being out, but Aaron Jones got a big piece of work, and he was awesome. Four rushing touchdowns, very good in the passing game. I just hope this means that when Jamal Williams comes back, he's just a backup, and this is Aaron Jones' job. For what it's worth, in the first quarter of that game, Troy Aikman said they're just worried about him holding up, about Aaron Jones. They didn't act like they were. They certainly fed him, but you're right, Heath. I mean, it would be such a fantasy game changer for him to get huge workload. Uh, can I just get since he's not in the notes until like the end of the show? Can I just say this? Aaron Rodgers to me, guys. I mean, I still think he's playing great. He looks, you know, a little worried about him going into a new offense. He still looks like he is completely in control, doing anything he wants to do. Fantasy points have been pretty bad. He was only started in 65% of leagues. Um, he scored what like nine points. Um, he, I think he's an amazing buy low. I know we're not really talking about this now, but. I just feel like Aaron Rodgers is going to go berserk. His schedule gets really good. I think he's I think he's going to go nuts in the next few for the basically the rest of the season until maybe weeks 15 and 16 the Bears and the Vikings, but you guys feeling the same way about Aaron Rodgers? We 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 are toward the end of that tough schedule that we talked about for the Packers and it was one of the reasons why I was very nervous to draft Aaron Jones and that looks pretty dumb right now because he's got eight touchdowns and Aaron Rodgers has six. Kind of crazy when you when you think about it, but wow. Aaron Jones has been playing great. I love that they're leaning on him and giving him a lot of work. His 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 snap count actually dropped from last week. Last week he had eighty four percent. This week he was down to sixty seven percent. And they they used Trey Carson as the second back, but obviously Aaron Jones is the one that got the work and the touchdowns. It's the touchdown regression, that's obvious. No one's expecting him to have but Dave, four touchdowns a game. What about Aaron Rodgers? Well, what you, about him? Well, and that's Aaron kind of what I'm getting at is that as long as Devontae low. Adams is out and as long as Aaron Jones is doing his thing, and I think you might be able to pencil in Aaron Jones for a touchdown a game now, I, I think it's going to hurt Aaron Rodgers. I don't know how many three touchdown games Rodgers is going to have. 
And if we were dra- redrafting right now, would he be a top three fantasy quarterback? No. Would he be a top one fantasy quarterback? No. no. He wouldn't He's be anywhere close one. to where he might he have a hard one. time being a top ten fantasy quarterback no. See, if we were drafting think, right now. I think Not top five. Great. He's between six and ten. I think maybe. Play- All right. Name five quarterbacks you'd rather have. Mahomes, than Rock. Lamar, Watson, and Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan's been playing better, and he's going to continue to throw the ball a ton. Well, look, everyone's Dak. been playing better. Dak is another I see, one. That's, that's I don't know about Dak. I don't know about Dak. Uh, I, I think he said I Andy Dalton. <laughs> Russell Wilson. Kyler Murray. Russell Wilson's a, Kyler Murray over Aaron Rodgers? Maybe. I mean, I'm just Maybe. throwing names out there now. What about Brady, who's had 24 Wits. fantasy points in three of his last four? That might be good enough to be better than Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. All right, but we know. <laughs> okay, okay, good discussion. Uh, the other, Heath, so thank you for kind of really searching deep for Aaron Jones. Who's the other guy that you just somehow came well, up with? There was a receiver that nobody was talking about that had been terrible so far this season, barely even got any looks, and thankfully there was an injury on his team, got him some more opportunities this week, and Will Fuller took advantage of those injuries. 16 targets, 14 receptions, 217 yards, the greatest game of Will Fuller's life, more fantasy points that he had scored this entire season so far, probably more points than his teammate DeAndre Hopkins has scored all season, really found that connection with Deshaun Watson. And this was the type of game that just reminded me of two things. One, man, Atlanta's defense is terrible again. Two, <laughs> this is the type of production I thought Deshaun Watson could have when I said he was the number one challenger to Patrick Mahomes. That's what he looked like in this game. He had that same connection with Fuller. I don't know how I feel about Will Fuller over the rest of the season, but he gets the Chiefs and the Colts the next two weeks, so I really don't care. So and the Raiders. So, Dave, before you respond, do you think, I just looked it up, and it, it's fairly close, do you think Will Fuller with his 53 PPR fantasy yes, points the answer outscored is yes. DeAndre Hopkins? Yes. No. It's no. No? It, You're wrong, DeAndre Dave. Hopkins in the first four games. It's no. What did he have Hopkins in the had, first four games? He had, let's see, 30, 35 plus however many catches he had, 10 plus 19, so that's 54. I think he beat him by one. Well, that's Woo! good for him. That's good. And it makes me no, no, nervous. No, no, he beat him by more than that. He beat him by more than that. It makes yeah. me nervous and frustrated as a uh, DeAndre Hopkins fantasy manager, fantasy owner. Um, I'm doing the non-PPR math on this, and it's okay. 33, 35 points that Hopkins had coming into week five. That's mm-hmm. his cumulative points for the week. And uh, what did our guy Fuller have in non-PPR? Uh, he 39. Had 39. So that's more. more. Okay. He had more. In non-PPR, he had more. In PPR, he had fewer. Okay. So anyway, um, Aaron Jones and Will Fuller are Heat's winners. Dave, your winners are DJ Chark and Kyler Murray. Go for it. I think DJ Chark has earned himself some more cred and what it's up to you whether or not you want to call him a must start guy, but I think he's a top 24 receiver moving forward and, and Gardner Minshew is going to continue to look for him. It's the way that he's using this offense. It's not the same type of Blake Bortles dink and dunk and, you know, cover your eyes and throw a deep ball and hope that somebody with the same helmet as you catches it 30 yards downfield. Chark is making incredible plays. He has a size advantage over everybody that he lines up against. He's got a speed advantage over everybody that he lines up against. So it makes perfect sense that the Jaguars <laughs> continue to lean on him. I think he's – I don't want to say he's matchup proof because I've been using that term way too liberally lady, lately. Lady. Oh. Um, against it's New okay. Orleans next week, it, 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 could be, it could be <laughs> tough. But we know that the Saints defense is a little bit rougher on the road than they are at home. Chark will be back at home. And I think that he can come through with at least another touchdown, if not 70, 80 yards on top of it. So that would put him in the top 24 range. And if you've got him, hang on to him. Good numbers come. Okay. Carolina, by the way, held Cooper Cup, Mike Evans, Christian Kirk, and DeAndre Hopkins to 61 or fewer yards with eight or more targets. And then DJ Chark goes out and has 164 yards and two touchdowns on 11 targets at Carolina. Kyler Murray is your other winner he was only started in 50 percent of leagues he scored 25 fantasy points in six point per passing touchdown leagues he did that without a passing touchdown 
which is crazy, which means that there is potential for him to put up even higher numbers as the season rolls along. And I really picked him as a winner because the next couple of weeks, he's got unbelievable matchups. He's got the Falcons matchup at home. We talked about that. Giants after that. He's at New Orleans in week eight. That's going to be tough. And then he's got San Francisco after that. We'll see what their secondary looks like. So there are going to be some games coming up here where Kyler Murray is going to be a top 12 fantasy quarterback. And I think fantasy managers should um, embrace him as such, as long as he continues running like he's running. And I think the team wants to keep him uh, active and mobile. It's going to make things harder on defenses. He can put pressure on them. He can run out of the pocket and bootleg and throw downfield. I'd like to see the Cardinals develop some more speed amongst their receivers. They could use some of that because I don't know if Larry's got it, and I don't know if they've got enough field stretchers. One of the guys they could use is Andy Isabella. I know they've talked about him not being ready, but the sooner they do someone, the sooner they get someone who can stretch the field for Kyler, the better his numbers will really explode. And uh, let's go to the losers now. Start with Dave's losers. We have Emmanuel Sanders, who had one catch for nine yards on one target at the Chargers. Yeah. And uh, David Montgomery, who luckily scored a touchdown, but boy, he had a terrible game. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders. And now it's two of his last three games where he has two catches or fewer or 10 yards or fewer, and he doesn't score. He had 100 yards in between. Hasn't scored since week two. And the target share is very hit or miss. I'd like to think that the Broncos are going to try and be a little more balanced. They ended up not being so balanced today. And uh, schedule coming up for the Broncos. I've got it here. They've got the the uh, the Titans next week. That's going to be a tough matchup. Kansas City at home, you'd think that they'd be able to throw the ball or have to throw the ball in that game. But the one reason why I think Emmanuel Sanders' value is dropping and he's a loser is because Cortland Sutton is becoming a winner. He looks like he's the best receiver in Denver. Oh, yeah. he's He looks great. Another big day for him. Another touchdown for Cortland Sutton. David Montgomery, so... The game script was just completely flipped. I mean, I didn't think it was going to be a good Josh Jacobs game. I thought they were going to be trailing. I thought that Montgomery would get a ton of carries and score. He did score. He had 11 carries for 25 yards and a touchdown. He had one catch against Oakland. It was a really bad game for the Bears, who, by the way, lost Akeem Hicks, one of the best defensive tackles in football. Yeah, that didn't help. That didn't help, but flying to England on Friday was really a curious decision. So what do you think about Montgomery going forward? He's going into his bye and takes a bit of a step back this week. 84% started. It's it's going to be tough because he's got the Saints, then the Chargers, then the Eagles, then the Lions, then the Rams, all after the bye. It's going to be a lot of touchdown-dependent type situations for him. I wonder if what happened in this game is going to make the coaching staff think, hmm, maybe we need to take a little bit off of his plate and put more on Tariq Cohen's plate or who knows what they'll come up with after the bye week. But you know, teams are going to self scout during the bye and they're going to see that David Montgomery's rushing average. Isn't very good. Do you know what it is right now? Do you have any clue? 2.5, 3.2, 3.2 closer. It's 3.3. He has one game this year with more than 3.4 yards per carry. Kind of crazy. So I, I think the uh, Bears do you are going gonna... to... Dave, do you trust him? Do you trust him going forward? No. I, I think he's worth having on a fantasy roster. I just don't think he's worth being a automatic start week in and week out. Let's go on to Heath's losers now. A couple of wide receivers, DeAndre Hopkins and Stephon Diggs. So Hopkins does end up with a decent line. Seven catches, 88 yards on eight targets. It must have all been late. Uh, man, I looked at one point and I was like, gosh, he's having a terrible game. But this is now four straight games with seven, eight targets. Um, this was his best game of his last four. But, yeah, it's it's another disappointing game for Hopkins. Yeah, and the problem was not the seven for 88. We could live with that. It's the seven for 88 on a day when his quarterback scores 51 fantasy points. That's bad, bad news because there will be days where his quarterback scores 20. He's just not – like since week one, I think week one he had 13 targets, 11. He had double-digit targets for sure week one. Since then, he does not have double-digit targets in a game. He's on pace for about 140 target targets on the year, which is a big downgrade. They've got too many other options. I was hoping with Kenny Stills out, we would see his target share go up. Instead, it just almost all went to Will Fuller. I Listen, you're still going to start DeAndre Hopkins. There's nothing too actionable about this other than I don't know that he's a buy low in the mold that you know he's going to turn back into the number one overall wide receiver. He looks more like a low-end number one than the number one right now. 
I would love to trade for him. I think that there will be some bounce back. And listen, one of the problems that we're talking about with Hopkins is that the seven catches for 88 yards that he had today, it's his second best game of the season. You look at the weeks two, three, and four, he was below 88 yards. He was below seven catches. He, he, he was pretty bad. And I can't help but think that the more that the Texans can establish fuller, the harder it'll be for defenses to just put the coverage on Hopkins side. That's what the Falcons did. They were double covering DeAndre Hopkins and they were basically forgetting about Will Fuller, two of his touchdowns today. He was so wide open. It was pathetic. Uh, The Falcons are not going to like watching film on Monday when they see just how wide open Fuller ended up being. Hopkins will get his numbers. You can go to the guy that has Hopkins in your league, try and buy low on him. So who's our number one wide receiver rest of season? PPR is probably Michael Thomas. Yeah. Thomas, to me, it looked like Thomas was going to have a monster game against Tampa Bay because the Bucks' run defense had been so good. Thomas could be that guy because he's he's putting up good enough numbers now, and when Drew Brees comes back, those numbers should be the same, if not better. But he has not even come close to being the number one wide receiver in fantasy. No, he hasn't so like far. never. So I I'm I'm hesitant to to buy that. Well, which um, guy? Besides Hopkins, who has been a number one wide receiver in the past, like it's basically Antonio Brown, who's not playing football anymore. I was going to say Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams. How can you call him the number one receiver when he's got a bad toe? We don't know when he's going to come back. I think think to me it seems like he's going to miss at most one one more game. That's just what it seems like to me. Um, You know, because – I have more faith in him. I like him a lot better than I like Michael Thomas. I, I just, we did on draft day. I still do now. I uh, liked him a was, lot better when he was getting that type of target share from Aaron Rodgers. But again, that happened over 15 games in a career that now spans seven did years. Did you see week four? He Doesn't, had like 180 yards. I, I entered, Did you see the first three? That, that the he last played, game he, he played, played is the, the only Vikings, one that we Bears and the Broncos. He, played, he faced the three best cornerbacks in football, maybe except for Jalen Ramsey. Like the matchups matter. He had terrible matchups. I mean, just, just a few one weeks ago, we're talking about Keenan Allen as the number, number one guy. Yes, he should. I, I mean, he shouldn't care about that. I think you can make the case for Cooper, Amari, or Cup. I think you can make the case for Godwin. And I think you can make the case for Michael yeah. Thomas. And even though the numbers the last two weeks have been really dreadful, I still think you can make the case for Julio Jones. Sure. Yeah. As a for potential sure. number one overall. Oh, receiver. yeah. Right. That, you know what? That's probably a better a better call than Devontae Adams. All right, I'll take Julio. Yeah, By the he's way, got I'm ten gonna, healthy toes. I'm gonna call it a uh, successful bonanza. Texans Falcons. Oh yeah. I'm gonna put that in the win column, even though Julio and Hopkins were a little, a little disappointing. It's a new a score. A little. Uh, Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs, you're the loser, Heath. I'm sorry. We talked about him earlier, so let's uh, let's skip ahead a little bit. We got more injuries to get to and a breakdown of all the games. Do you have your believe it or not ready? Of course. I believe it. I also believe that SeatGeek is by far the best app for tickets. If you're not using SeatGeek for tickets, then you are basically sitting Josh Jacobs against the Bears, making a huge, huge mistake. Uh, SeatGeek has over 50,000 five-star reviews. They care so much about customer satisfaction. They are the ticketing app that cares about the customer experience. They make it very easy to buy tickets, and they make it very easy to save money when you're buying tickets. First of all, you're going to get great prices because SeatGeek pulls in tickets from all over the web, brings them all to one place, and tells you where the best deals are. It gives you a seating map, and it gives you all these dots on the seating map. The big green dots, those are the best values. Go ahead and buy those tickets. I use it all the time. I keep searching for cheap cheap seats to the Yankees games. Not any luck so far, but I'm going to be on SeatGeek over and over again until I get myself to a playoff game. So if you want to save an extra 10 bucks, all you got to do is download the SeatGeek app and use our promo code. It's FFD. The promo code is FFT on the SeatGeek app. That's 10 bucks off your first purchase. One more time, everybody. Download the SeatGeek app. Use the promo code FFT for $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. All right, more news and notes. I uh, mentioned Akeem Hicks left with an elbow injury. Xavier Rhodes got dinged up, but he came back in the game. Tight end James O'Shaughnessy, or as the cool people would say, Oshag Hennessy, he left with a knee injury. Uh, Brandon Williams played for Baltimore, and their run defense was very good. Tony Jefferson tore his ACL, mentioned that. Green Bay cornerback Kevin King, I did not think he was going to play. He ended up playing, and he got hurt again, aggravated his groin injury. 
They got Detroit next week. Uh, Corey Lindsay, Lindsley left with a concussion. That's Green Bay's center. And their linebacker, Zadaria Smith, kept getting hurt throughout the game. So it was, that, it was a big win for them, but came yeah. at a price. Smith yeah. is, has seemingly pulled a LaShawn McCoy. He, he gets hurt every week and then just <laughs> comes back and plays. Uh, the Patriots are the first team since the Browns in 88 to not allow a touchdown pass in five straight games. Will Daniel Jones break the streak in week six? Yep. Ooh, uh, all right, yes. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. I mean, look at who Mike they Tomlin. played, though. Look at who they played. Yeah. No, they you haven't know, faced Roethlisberger with yet. a bad elbow. They, the Dolphins. They won't face a good quarterback next week either. The Jets. Yes, they will. Josh Allen. Uh, they have... They had faced the Hall of Famer, Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, the the Steelers, Mike Tomlin won the overtime coin toss, and he kicked off, and it worked. He made a great call, but they fumbled the game away. Buffalo has won three straight road games for the first time since 2004, but their center, Mitch Morse, left with an injury, and that's, that's a big one. Let's go mm-hmm. now to the top five players at each position. And at quarterback, it is Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Matt Ryan, uh, Teddy Bridgewater and Tom Brady. So four quarterbacks scoring 34 or more fantasy points. You go back to last week, only one quarterback scored 30 or more. This week we have four. We have Watson, Wilson, Ryan, and Bridgewater, and then we have Tom Brady. And Heath, uh, any reaction to this top five? Brady's production, I didn't get to see a lot of that game for obvious reasons. Uh, Brady's production came mostly late in that game, right? Like he threw mostly a touchdown second half, I'd say, yeah. Mostly second half, and after they had a three-score lead, it was kind of a weird game because he looked pretty terrible in the first half. They were having a hard time protecting him against that Washington front. Uh, I'm glad that he's. I mean, if you started him, it worked out. I don't feel like he's going to be awesome next week against the Giants, but if if he ever has a difficult matchup, I don't feel supremely confident. All right, let's go to the top five running backs. We know Aaron Jones and Christian McCaffrey are the top two. They actually scored the same amount of points in non PPR, which it's just amazing. And then Jones had seven catches. McCaffrey had six. Uh, Josh Jacobs, three. Philip Lindsay, four. Very interesting game for Philip Lindsay. 15 carries, 114 yards, and a touchdown, plus four catches, 33 yards. And Dalvin Cook is number five. Cook actually one point ahead of Lindsay in PPR, but these are non PPR. Aaron Jones, McCaffrey, Josh Jacobs, Lindsay, and Cook. So, Dave, uh, we talked a little bit about Jacobs, but Lindsay, you know. He's ba- he's really had three pretty bad games and two very good ones. Yep. It's frustrating. I I don't want to get too excited about this because Royce Freeman is still getting a big chunk, but Royce Freeman does not have a touchdown this season. So what do you think? I, I think Lindsey is still the better running back of the two. Uh, and we've oscillated between the two of them because it's typically either one of them is really good or both of them are really bad. It just seems like there's never... Um, a week where both of them are just amazing and you feel good about it. And it's because the Broncos use them just so evenly. And I'm, I'm trying to look up their snaps for this week. Bottom line is this. They take on Tennessee next week. I think it's a tough matchup. Anytime there's a tough matchup between running backs who are going to split, you can't feel really good about using one or the other as anything more than a flex option. Yeah, so I mean, would you be looking to sell Philip Lindsay on the heels of this game? Sure. If you can if you can take Philip Lindsay and another player on your team and turn it into one better player, I think it's worth doing. Would you rather have Philip Lindsay or David Montgomery rest of season? My knee jerk answer was Philip Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay. Heath? Lindsay. All right. How do you see these uh, guys, Heath? I it's a I don't really disagree much. I think they're both gonna get work. They're both heavily involved in the passing game. I think they're both good. Uh, no, but Lindsay's going to be a low end number two running back. Freeman's going to be a high end flex most weeks. Each of the last two weeks, Freeman's played more than Lindsay. The snaps. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah. Like the the car- the the touches are so even, right? So it's yeah. like yeah, There's... I don't really care about the snap count. The touches are very even with Lindsay probably a, a touch ahead, like not not a single touch, like a little bit ahead. <laughs> um, but you know, let me let me check the stats going into. This week, because two weeks ago, Philip Lindsay had all of the carries inside the five. Uh, and still, he had going into this week, he had five of them. And Freeman, this is interesting, had none. So I don't know if that changed this week. I didn't see anything from Freeman inside the five, but I'll check tomorrow. Wide receivers. 
We know number one is Will Fuller. Number two is Michael Thomas. Three, DJ Chark. Four, Amari Cooper with 226 yards. Adam Thielen is your number five wide receiver this week. It's Fuller, Michael Thomas, Chark, Cooper, and Thielen. Heath, anything we didn't cover from this group? I think Thielen's just keeping Byron Pringle's spot warm, it looks like, according to the Sunday Night Football game. So, <laughs> yeah, I I don't think so. I think we mostly talked about these guys. I just wanted to say Byron Pringle's name. I don't I don't know the context. So. Once you pop, uh, you can't Sam, stop. Yeah, Sammy Sammy Watkins was not actually okay to play. Byron Pringle is playing for him and leads the Chiefs in receiving in the first quarter. Great, interesting. I don't think we've talked about tight ends at all today. So other than the James, are there, Hennessey, are there any? Do we need to talk <laughs> about them? Who's your Who's the number one tight end in non PPR this week? Gerald Everett. False. One point behind, non PPR by the way. Darren Fells. Darren Fells. Everett is number one in PPR. Uh, Fells, Everett, Ertz, Jared Cook, and Ryan Izzo. And I did say yeah, like so... a ten, like ten times. That Jared Cook had a great matchup. The Bucks are so bad against tight ends. And he should have had two touchdowns. It's the only yeah. reason why Greg Olson is still worth a start next week. Yeah. Because he takes I had on a, those Bucks. I had a fan duel lineup this week that scored like 220 points. And it was a Texan stack. And there was only one thing wrong with the lineup. And that it, I played Jordan Akins and not Darren Fells. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I assume you uh, cashed with that? Yeah, I cashed. Excellent. You. you could have retired if you had played Aiken. Well, we got uh, some games to get through. No? No? Okay. I still haven't won the million yet, ladies and gentlemen. I still haven't won the million. So <laughs> you're stuck with me for a little while. We've got some games to cover here. We're going to take a quick break on fantasy football today. We start with the game of the week. When we come back, find out what it was. Bills Titans. Game of the week. Minnesota 28, Giants 10. Uh, no. what, it's the first one I put in the notes, and it stayed first. I didn't change the order. I don't know why. Believe it so, or not, her, uh, oh, Adam yeah, Thielen oh, yeah, yeah. is a top 10 wide receiver rest of the season. Not, as Borat would say. I'm not going to believe it. I don't believe it either. There will still be good games where Diggs is good, but I mostly took out of this, and it's still the same similar situation. I gave this stat on FFT today. They've now won five games since they changed offensive coordinators. They've not thrown more than 28 passes in a win yet. And I think they're going to win more games than they lose over the rest of the season. I do not believe we're going to see very many games when both Thielen and Diggs are startable. The difficult thing is you don't really know which one it's going to be on a week-to-week basis. I would bet on Thielen most weeks over Diggs, but there's going to be weeks where Diggs is good and Thielen's not. I I agree. I I think Thielen is the one that just is in – better uh he's got the better chemistry with cousins i think cousins likes throwing to him a little bit more than Diggs. and uh target share says it would you believe that he is currently currently a top 10 receiver in non-ppr i have not checked ppr that's where that's where it came from dave yeah oh i, I see. would believe that i got it so you would believe that he's a top 10 receiver now but can he do right. it the rest of the way no nope. i'm thinking as long as dalvin cook is doing his thing it's going to be hard for Thielen to keep it up but, you know, guys, I think it's pretty interesting that Thielen's coming off a six-yard performance, Diggs is coming off a 100-yard performance, and Thielen was started in 98% of leagues, Diggs was started in 67% of leagues. So that tells me there is a big difference in the way they are perceived by, uh, by the fantasy owners. Uh, yep. For the Giants, anything to say here? I mean, would you hang on to Golden Tate? He's 82% owned. He had three yep. catches for 13 yards on six targets. I definitely would. Okay. Why? All right. Why would you? We didn't learn anything. Like, it was a terrible matchup against Minnesota. It was his first game back. He had no rapport with the quarterback. No one should have expected anything good from Golden Tate in this game. We picked him up, I hope, knowing that. He was owned in 82% of leagues, only started in 22. This was a uh, feel-it-out game. If he's yeah. terrible next week, then I'd drop him. Once once Saquon's back, and if Saquon's right, it's going to hurt all the, the t- target volume of everybody in this offense, and he's not going to be number one or number two or number three because Saquon Barkley will be up ahead of him. I don't see any reason yeah. why if, if you if you hung on to him this long, you want to keep him, you go right ahead. But I don't think there's ever going to be a week where we go, oh, you got to start Golden Tate for this reason and that reason. I don't think it's happening. I think you can let him go. 
Sterling Shepard was wisely started in just 55% of leagues. He ended up with five catches for 49 yards. He did have 10 targets, and he should have had a touchdown. Daniel Jones yeah. missed him in the end zone. Yeah, and he actually I would had disagree two end with zone wisely. Starting. I would disagree with wisely. Why? There's no reason why Sterling Shepard sh- should have been he started. Sh- he should have been good in this game, and I should have been Why? Right. Oh. <laughs> he, had, he had 10 targets well, and an almost touchdown. Any receiver that has 10 targets and an almost touchdown, you would say he should have had a good day. He didn't get it. He did not get Xavier Rhodes. It's, I thought they would have Xavier Rhodes on him, and they did. Of course didn't. he I did. Mean, I'm not saying he was never on him, but uh, Xavier Rhodes just stayed. It seemed like on one side of the field, he was on Darius Slayton a lot. All right, moving on. Buffalo 14 and Tennessee 7. The other game of the week. Sorry, there we go. Uh, Dave, any any takeaways from Buffalo and Tennessee? Tennessee should have won the game. They had four missed field goals. One was blocked. They had two touchdowns on one drive called back by penalties. Henry had one of them, uh, so he could have had a two-touchdown game. A.J. Brown had the other one. He could have had another touchdown. This this Titans offense just continues to just make me mad. I, when I watch them, I get upset. I don't oh, know how I you could. I actually forgot. I forgot about Believe It or Not. So Heath is probably the upset one here. Uh, is Heath, there, is there a Believe It or Not for this game? Because I would believe that there's nothing good that fantasy managers can learn from this Bills Titans game. It was it was defensive, and uh, it, there wasn't a lot of really good things to come out of it fantasy wise. He, I, but Heath, what do you think? what do you have? To Believe say it or that? not, Delaney Walker should be dropped. Believe it, Dave. You go first. Believe, Believe it. it. Uh. Sh- no, I mean, I don't think there are 12 better tight ends, but you could drop them, I suppose. Okay, believe it or not, Josh Allen is a uh, a fantasy starter when he's he not on a bye off, next week. He was awful in this game. He scored Absolutely 20 fantasy awful. points. He scored I don't 20 like fantasy him. points because somebody took a long, pa- a, long a short pass a long way. He was. Serious. I don't like him. I, I just okay. So the answer is not that. But he he does. He has three rushing touchdowns this year. That uh, helps. New England. New England 33, Washington 7, Heath. Believe it or not, you really can't trust Josh Gordon as anything more than a flex. I believe it. Nobody wants I'm to gonna, believe it, but it I, sure I'm gonna seems be stubborn. true. I'm going to be stubborn for one more week and, and say I still like him. But, like, okay, if you, if you can't do it against the Giants, then, yeah, we're in a lot of trouble. Well, like, he just played Washington. And his I quarterback agree. threw I, three touchdowns. Yeah, I think if – Another good matchup. If he has another bad game, we're in trouble. So, I think I'm. I think yeah. I think I have to believe it at this point. And I feel bad because I, I he was really a big buy low for me, but it doesn't make any sense. He was so good last year when Gronkowski was out. That was the whole basis for me loving Josh Gordon. He's their he's their best outside receiver. Philip Dorsett got hurt in this game. Just Everything lined make sense. up for him to have a monster game. And it was Brandon Bolden, Ryan Izzo, and Julian Edelman who caught the touchdown passes. And he continues to get a lot of targets. Eight targets against Washington. Seven the week before against Buffalo, and that's a tougher matchup. Had 11 against the Jets. No touchdowns. No more than 83 yards in the game. It is frustrating for sure. And there are many great matchups ahead. And I'm positive the Patriots would like to try and get him going so that he's, he's a dangerous threat for the playoffs. They're not really concerned about our fantasy squads, of course. But they're, they're, it, when I watch him, it feels like he's not plugged in the way other players on this team are plugged in. And I wonder if that's what's holding him back from being um, a great stat producer. Up, up, Heath, anything Adam? from the Redskins? Yeah. Byron Pringle is now up to 75 yards and a touchdown, <laughs> and Patrick Mahomes just threw a laser beam. Okay, thanks. For, you know I'm DVRing the game, so yeah. please, I have my Sunday night ritual. I do the dishes, I clean the kitchen, and I watch the game. And you are destroying it. Now you have to come over and do my dishes. Heath, anything from the Redskins here? Um, no. I okay, like good. you're not going to learn a whole lot. I still have a lot of interest in Terry McLaurin. I think he'll be a good number three wide receiver for much of the year. I I don't like McLaurin as much catching passes from Colt McCoy. He's I no want the Redskins. Keenum. I want the Redskins to go back to Case Keenum. Get, give the rookie a chance to, to wait 
and just get some experience <laughs> on the sideline. Give him a chance I, to wait, I think everybody. you started that sentence the wrong way. You did not mean to start with give the rookie a chance. You want them to not give the rookie a chance. I, you're that. right. You're right. I want the rookie to have no chance. No chance <laughs> okay, in hell. Okay. Leave him on the bench Tampa for the Bay, year. Don't put him out there. Case Keenum should start. New Orleans 31, Tampa Bay 24. Heath. Chris Godwin is a better fantasy receiver than Mike Evans. Believe it. Oh yeah, I think at this point, how could you how could you not believe that? I got a better one. I'll, I'll do a better one. Uh, believe it or not, you can't just come up with these on one. the fly. Right? <laughs> of course you don't. You don't. I put oh, the oh, oh oh oh! I got it. Believe it or not, OJ Howard is is a, a must drop tight end. Well, obviously. That's a believe it. It's eighty three percent owned. Bye. <laughs> it is okay. I'm done. I think OJ I'm done is getting game. squeezed. Would you rather have Jameis Winston or Josh Allen at quarterback rest of season? Jameis Winston. Winston easily in a four point per passing touchdown league. Oh, well, let's change it now because you're changing. No, still Jameis. Okay. Philadelphia 31, Jet 6. Sorry, graphics department. Philadelphia 31, Jet 6. I moved on from the game very quickly there. Heath, what are we believing or not in the Philadelphia game? Jordan Howard is a must start running back in all formats. Mm, I'm not ready to say he's a must start. I don't believe Yeah, I'm not him. feeling it at, at Minnesota next week. Yeah. That's going to be tricky. I hate, oh boy, look at their next We knew this was coming, right? Yeah. At Minnesota, at yeah. Dallas, at Buffalo, Chicago, a bye, New England. Yeesh. Believe it or not, Jordan Howard is a great sell high candidate. Believe it. Uh, I yeah. For sure. Yeah, but at the same time, I'll give the counterpoint. He's running behind a great offensive line. The Jets actually came into this game giving up less than four yards per carry, and he had 13 carries, 62 yards, and a touchdown. And if he's their goal line guy, then it, it's a similar situation to Aaron Jones' first few weeks of the season where his rushing average was terrible, but he was just scoring a lot. So maybe good offense, good offensive line, he could just plunge in from one or two yards out and still be valuable. But that's why you would be starting him because unlike know, Aaron saying, Jones the last two weeks, he's sharing, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. This is just the way that it is for Eagles running backs. You know, Maybe if, if, if Miles Sanders gets hurt, it changes things. And we did see Darren Sproles get hurt, and maybe that opens up just more playing time for the both of them. Howard had 44% of the snaps. Miles Sanders had 42% of the snaps. It's a, it, almost a dead heat between the two of them. There's probably one snap difference between Howard and and uh, Miles Sanders. And the bottom line is that Howard does get those touchdowns. How many is he going to score over the next five weeks, given their opponents? Two? He's he's a, he's a very good flex running back, but maybe during by NATO he's a number two running back, given the tough matchups. Uh, and what do you guys think about Le'Veon Bell right now? You know, the Jets, they're starting a, a third-string quarterback. And Bell has averaged 2.9 yards per carry. He does have a ton of rece receptions, though. Um, but, Let, you know. I, I'm I'm not going to make any proclamations about Bell, Robbie Anderson, Jamison Crowder, anyone on this Jets offense until we see Sam Darnold. Probably not even in Darnold's first game back. But Sam, Sam Darnold's second game back. Then we'll decide if these guys can be any good or not. Oh, yeah, by the way, Chris, uh, Chris Herndon. All the Jets, I think, are waiver wire guys. If Darnold's back next week against Dallas... Even though they're yeah. playing tough defenses coming up, Dallas you don't Patriots, want to use Jaguars. Them. Like no, for me, it's yeah, I agree. Stash only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, right. And might have to stash for a while because they in four weeks it's Miami Giants, Redskins, Raiders, Bengals, Dolphins. So it's just like the Jets at some point will have probably the best schedule in football for six weeks, uh, but you do have to wait a little bit. Okay, they're we got they're Chicago one of four. Over. They are one of four winless teams. They play all the other winless teams over nice. the course of the season, including <laughs> the Dolphins twice. Heath, what's our believe it or not for Giants or for uh, Giants? Come on, Adam. For Bears Raiders. It was a. I got that game confused a lot too. It was very similar. B really hmm. bad team against an FC North opponent that has a good defense. Uh, sure. Foster Moreau is a problem for Darren Waller. I don't believe it. I don't believe you. He, he has seen an increased role the last couple of weeks 
in terms of targets, receptions. There was no number one wide receiver with Tyrell Williams gone, so I think more of the attention went to Waller. I'm not quite ready to say I definitely believe it, but I'm. it's something I'm considering. How do you, no. of all people, not say Moro of the attention went to Waller instead of more of the attention? Like, what a missed opportunity from Heath. Do you, but do you understand what's wrong with you as a human being? Like, <laughs> I would have just, after that, said... You know, Dave, it is true, more of the attention, but you wanted to point out that I did something wrong. Just do something good yourself. I, I, wait, wait. Just because you're making puns, it doesn't like, mean that you're doing something good. you just accomplish something? Yeah, I, I am. I'm, I'm letting you know that you missed your opportunity. To, uh, Dave, uh, I, I'm to ready to do na 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 and end this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where we're at or how many more games we have to go through, but come on well, now. We have you enough. Two. We have okay. about five. Look, bottom line is this: there's gonna the receivers will get healthy for Oakland, and Waller will continue to get those check down and underneath passes from Derek Carr. Plain and simple. Okay. Is Allen uh, Robinson? Believe it or not, is Allen Robinson a top twenty-four fantasy receiver rest of season? Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. Target he share be, was great again today. He might be top fifteen. Target share was would, great again. He's looking would you good. Would rather have? Would you rather have him or Mike Evans? I'd still rather have Evans because there will be more game. The, I, I feel like the game script for the Bucks is going to be the same every week, whereas the Bears, this this was a little abnormal and definitely a surprise. But we Robinson all thought that he had, wouldn't have many targets because the Bears would have a lead. They didn't. He's had good PPR volume just every regardless yep. of format, or right, regardless of what the game I'm, script was. I'm thinking more about the touchdowns and the yardage. Like a, a game like this, 7 for 97 and 2, I don't think he sees a game that good the rest of the season. All right, let's go finish up now. That hour five mark is, is rapidly approaching. Carolina 34, Jacksonville 27. Gardner Minshew is the best rookie quarterback in fantasy. We did this one before. You didn't believe no. it. It's time, it's time for you to believe it. I'd He's rather have awesome. Kyler Murray. I'd rather have you Kyler. You have to grow a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm definitely going to have to grow a mustache. Uh, it's going to be ugly, but I still would rather have Kyler Murray. But I got to tell you, man, I'm very impressed with Gardner Minshew. He is 32% owned. That is just not enough. Dave, believe it or not, best rookie quarterback. I, I can't believe it because when Nick Foles is healthy, is Nick Foles going to be the quarterback of the Jaguars or is Gardner Minshew going to keep the job? If he's playing like this, you can't take the job away from him. Well, they're two and three. So I don't know if that if, if him playing well and putting up good fantasy numbers equates to him being the starting quarterback for the rest of the he, season. He, now, there's a bunch of variables. Two. We don't know if Nick Foles is going to be healthy anytime soon. Uh, we don't know if he could possibly get traded. I don't think he can Wait, I wanna, he's on IR. I want to skip ahead. Okay. Uh, by, uh, believe it or not, you can't trust anyone in the Panthers' passing game. I think next week is an interesting litmus test for them because they've got Tampa Bay. Start them. Believe yeah. it or not, you're not playing the game. Believe it or not. You can't trust anyone in the Panthers. I don't believe game. your statement. I, no, I don't. I in a in a okay. if it wasn't for them playing Tampa Bay, I might believe it. But they play Tampa Bay next week. I'm going to start them, so I can't believe it. Not going. I trust them. Not going week by week here. I'm going rest of season. I trust them this week. I can't say I don't trust them and then start them next week. Well, I mean, Houston 53, Atlanta 32. <laughs> go. <laughs> believe it or not, Devontae Freeman is an immediate sell high. Uh, believe it. Believe yeah, that. Believe that. So yeah, weird. get rid of him. Why is he so bad? <laughs> He's so bad. I, well, it's not. It's not. I. I really don't think. And Dave hit this nail right on the head. I want to give him some credit. I thought, and I think Jamie was with me, that the Falcons defense would be better. That Pete talked about how they were going to focus on running the football. And part of it's that they had some more injuries, but part of it's that they're just terrible defensively again. They can't stop anyone. They also, their offensive line did not make the improvements I thought they did. They can't run the football. They can't block anybody. And so they're just in this position where they have to throw it way too much. And yes, there's been good volume for the last two games for Freeman, but the way he's performing in the running game, to say he gets three catches per game, that's not enough. 48 catches 50 catches, I don't know, is enough when you're getting 30 rushing yards per game. I want to get Devontae Freeman off of my roster. All right. And let's go to Cincinnati 26, Arizona 23. Heath. Believe it or not, you can stream Andy Dalton again this week against the Ravens. 
I can't do it. Same I thing guess, as I mean, this I, past week. I can't do it. I don't know how I can say no on that. <sighs> the thing I didn't look at, and I should just know this, and Dave will probably know it immediately. Who We got four teams on a bye this week, right? In week yeah. six, yeah. And we have the they? Bills, the Bears, the Raiders, and the Colts. So no good quarterbacks <laughs> besides Jacoby Brissett. Brissett, yeah. But also do- not like really just one defense. So it, it's it's gonna be close. I I kind of believe it. Can we do a uh, a believe it or not on Joe Mixon? He come up with a believe it or not on Joe Mixon. Um, believe it or not, Joe Mixon can overcome the terrible Bengals. I believe it, but I don't believe it with supreme conviction. I think he can still be a relevant fantasy running back, but probably more of the top 15 variety than a top 12 variety, which means that I'm probably pulling back on what I said on Friday, which is that I'd rather have Mixon than Gurley rest of the year. He had 100 total yards in this game. I do think A.J. Green is going to really help him if – he ever gets back. All right, we got to uh, win. See. Three more games? Three more games. Believe Three it or not, minutes. the league is already catching up to Lamar Jackson and the Ravens' new offense. You know, maybe, but he's running so much that I don't know. It's not sure it matters. We only had, what, 13 fantasy points today? Yeah. Yeah, this was his first bad game of the year. If and he this had, had happened week one, last week. if this had happened week one, you know what I'd be saying right now. But it's yeah. happening in week five, and I'm I'm more than willing to give Lamar Jackson the benefit of the doubt, but his passing just hasn't looked as good. And it makes we'll a little bit of sense when you think about it because he's he's not comfortable in the pocket. He's not taking on the Dolphins and the Cardinals anymore. And he's got to rely on his legs a lot more, and he, he's turning the ball over a lot two, more. Two of those three interceptions today were absolutely not his fault. Yeah. Bo- both of them, like one of them, Mark Andrews sh- just basically handed to the defender, and I don't think it was actually an That's, interception. That one, that one, you're right on. The other, the one? other one bounced off of Andrews' helmet. So hey. was was that an on-target throw or not? It hit Probably. him in the helmet. I mean, I, I'll go back and watch it and let you know, but. You're, you're, I don't, I'd and, probably lean toward both of them off, not being his fault. Somewhere, I would say. All right, it was all right. Well, so, so you've already told me you'd rather have him than Aaron Rodgers. So how are you going to tell me you believe this? You can't possibly believe this. I don't believe it at all. Okay, okay, that's fine. No, it's reactionary uh, if you believe it. Did you know that James Conner has ten straight games with fewer, th- with no more than fifteen carries and no more than sixty-five rushing yards? I did not know that. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? We'll have to talk about that later on in the week. But and how about he had about zero right catches today after having eight on yep. Monday? He did score, though. That was good. Yeah, Denver 20, it. Chargers 13, Heath. Believe it or not, Cortland Sutton is the second best wide receiver in the AFC West. No, don't believe it. No, no chance. He's He might be third. <laughs> Tyreek, Keenan Allen, Cortland yeah. Sutton. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, let's see if I can get one more thing out of this game. We talked about Philip Lindsay. Uh, no, nah, that's it. Uh, How about this one? How about this one? Believe it or not, Mike Williams is droppable. He was the number one target. He had 13 targets. targets in this game. I know. And what did he do with that? Uh, I would, I would, he scored 13 fantasy points. In PPR, he not did. Not good enough. Not good enough. Yeah, I I'm not dropping him today, but I don't think he's I don't think it's crazy to drop him. I agree. Like to, I agree. I think I think Allen. if you can keep him, you should, especially in PPR. But I wonder if you see him trickle off of uh, non PPR rosters this coming week. You're worried about Keenan Allen? I'm a little worried about Keenan Allen. It's two bad games in a row. Yeah, there was so no was two bad there was games. no it, connection with Rivers games. and Allen. There was no well, connection. So at all that's the thing. Him. So are you telling me that you're worried about that? They've been playing together for what five years, and they've had a great connection basically every year. And now we're worried. I'm a little bit concerned. Yes, I wonder if there's a little injury there. I wonder if there's something wrong. Four Uh, for eighteen is absolutely awful. It's yes, bad. I'd be right. Last week though, didn't he have a touchdown called back against Miami? I don't. I think he did. I don't remember. I think he did did. too. I I just think that the the. I didn't watch closely enough to know whether or not Chris Harris shadowed him, 
But if that was the case, then it makes sense why he didn't get a lot of targets and didn't have a big game. Green Bay at Dallas. Green Bay gets the win. They're four and one. Heath. Believe it or not, Aaron Rodgers is not a top ten fantasy quarterback. Don't believe that at all. Not not wrong. It's very wrong. I mean, it's currently factually true. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about here. He's had the toughest matchups in football. Do not believe it. Absolutely not. I think it's really close because I'm pretty sure I could name at least seven quarterbacks I'd rather have. Let's see if I can name ten. Mahomes, Wilson, Watson, Jackson, Dak, Ryan, Brady, Wentz. All right, that's eight. I think... I got to eight. That you are, are, I think that you are going to feel very, very silly about this conversation in like five weeks. Okay. That he is going to destroy the NFL. And we're going to be like, oh my gosh, remember when we didn't believe strongly enough in Aaron Rodgers? Because he's playing great. He just kept handing it off at the goal line. If he had two touchdowns today, we wouldn't be talking about this. You know what? So, the, but the, Aaron, the Aaron Rodgers that I knew and loved would audible out of that play call and take a touchdown for himself. And the Aaron Rodgers that I knew and loved would have close to 300 yards, if not over 300 yards, on 34 pass attempts. He didn't have Devontae Adams, for goodness sake. We got to go, everybody. We will talk to you on Monday with some injury updates. I will tell you who won our Facebook contest this past week and tell you about the Week 6 Facebook contest. We'll talk to you then for Dave and for Heath. I'm Adam. Na, 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 na.